You begin life as an embryo. Your mother is the size of a thumb and already overloaded. Inside her tiny body are too many siblings and not enough space. Her ribs press against you. Her stomach is crushed flat. Her body stretches to the breaking point. And still, she must hunt. Even while pregnant, she cannot stop. Her metabolism burns too hot. If she slows down even for a few hours, she dies. Her heart is hammering at over a thousand beats a minute while she hunts for you. Night falls, rain comes down. A starving mother shrew darts under leaves, lungs pumping, heart screaming. She swallows a worm whole just to keep the embryos alive another hour. Imagine a human pregnant woman having to eat every hour all night, or the babies inside her begin to die. That is the shrew's baseline. You are born blind, hairless, pink, and squeaking. You weigh less than a coin. The nest is a thin blanket of leaves under a log. No walls, no roof, no mercy. Everything wants to eat you. A snake's tongue flickers nearby. The mother shrew stands shaking, a body the size of a matchbox blocking a head the size of a fist. She blasts the snake's face with sour musk, grabs a pup in her teeth, and sprints. She returns for the rest because hunger is hunting from every direction. But hunger is inside the nest too. If your mother can't find food fast enough, she may eat you. It isn't cruelty, it's math. One pup becomes calories so the rest in the mother survive the night. Imagine if humans live like this, a parent working three jobs who has to choose which child becomes dinner so the others make it to morning. Horrific! And the shrew has to consider it daily. You grow into a juvenile. Your eyes open. A fuzz of fur appears. Your heart rate slams toward 1,200 beats per minute, like sprinting forever. You must eat your own body weight daily just to not die. If you miss a meal, you're in danger. Miss two meals, you're done. Dawn breaks. You've been awake for 90 minutes without food. Your vision tunnels, legs wobble. You fall on your side. A beetle crawls by, you pounce and chew like your life depends on it, because it does. 10 minutes later, your world is bright again. The clock resets. You get maybe an hour of grace. Imagine if humans live like this, a 150 pound person needing to eat 150 pounds of food every day. Skip breakfast, organ failure by noon. You are small, but you are a predator. You stalk worms, beetles, spiders, crickets, anything you can overpower. Your saliva is mildly venomous. You bite into prey, paralyze it, and chew it alive. You squeak and shiver while eating because the engine inside never idles. In the night grass, a chirping cricket freezes as you arrive like a razor with legs. One bite, the legs lock. You drag it to cover, breathing so fast your chest blurs. Halfway through the meal, an owl shadow passes, gone. You flatten, heart going even faster. But predators are everywhere. Owls float silently. Snakes ripple through stems. Foxes dig the nest. Cats toy with you before breaking you. Even when a predator spits you out, it's not mercy. It's the stench you produce. Your last defense is to taste disgusting. In a backyard, a cat bats you into the air again and again. Your musk sprays. The cat recoils, disgusted, then crushes your ribs anyway because curiosity is stronger than appetite. You reach adulthood, but adulthood is no reward. Now you are cursed by speed. Your metabolism is so fast that even when you sleep, you are burning energy like a wildfire. You wake up starving every time. Your entire life is a blur of frantic movement. Hunt, kill, eat, repeat. Under a leaf, you collapse for 90 seconds. A cold draft jerks you awake. You sprint three meters, dig, inhale a grub in two bites, and keep moving. Always moving. Your body even starts cutting corners to survive. Some shrews literally shrink parts of their skeleton and brain in winter to reduce energy demand. Imagine a human skull tightening for the season, your brain downsized to keep your heart beating. You mate because nature won't wait. Males fight like box cutters. Females can raise multiple litters per year, up to 10 pups at once in a world designed to erase them. You love by feeding, you court by not dying, and you raise young by outrunning starvation. When a mother moves her nest, she can't carry six pups individually, they'd freeze. So the pups form a chain, each grabbing the tail of the one ahead with tiny teeth, the mother leading like a frantic train. One slip and the last pup is gone to a crow. The line reforms, they run. Your world is noise. 
Shrews echolocate soft obstacles with faint clicks. It's not bat-level sonar, it's budget echolocation. A scratchy map to keep you from smashing your face into death at full speed. Your universe's clicks, heartbeats, rustles, wingbeats, and the silent glide of an owl you rarely hear in time. A meadow shines with moonlight. You hustle along a rut, belly brushing dirt. The air pressure changes, a dark V opens above. Talons pass where your skull was a heartbeat ago. You live because you tripped, not because you sensed it. Winter arrives. You burn calories faster than a candle in wind. Fat is not storage, it's a fuse. Some nights you tunnel through frost for hours just to stay warm losing ground. You eat frozen worms like glass spaghetti. Imagine if humans live like this, eating 30,000 calories a day and still shivering to exhaustion because the air itself steals your life. Disease and parasites pile on. Fleas drink, mites chew, nematodes coil in your gut. An infection that a bigger mammal would shrug off becomes a death sentence when your margin is measured in minutes. You keep going because there's no other setting. Sheets of rain hammer the understory. You vibrate in a thimble-sized cave under a root. The flood rises. You must choose, drown slowly or sprint into talons. You choose the sprint. You always choose motion. Reproduction again. You mate, fight, feed, repeat. Litter after litter thrown against the wall of the world. Most pups won't see a second moon. A few will. That's enough for your species. It's not enough for you. Death is near from the day you're born. Heart failure. Cold. Cat. Owl. Snake. Traps. Cars. A missed breakfast. You rarely reach your first birthday. Many shrews are a spring rumor and an autumn memory. Morning frost. Your whiskers shine like threaded ice. You feel the slow creep of weakness, the kind that doesn't lift after a grub. You dig anyway. A white grub pulses in the soil. You fold it into your mouth with shaking paws. The light narrows. You lie down as if to groom. You do not rise. Now imagine if humans live like this, start to finish. Your heart beats like a hummingbird, 1200 plus BPM. You must eat your body weight daily or die by dinner. Skip two meals and your organs begin to shut down. Your brain shrinks for winter so your body can afford it. Your kids form a mouth-to-tail chain to keep up while you flee a fox. Your pepper spray is a gland that makes you taste awful. Your last dignity is disgusting someone to spit you out. And your entire life fits between two school semesters. That is the shrew contract. So, why does it suck to be born as a shrew? Because you are born into clock panic. Your metabolism is a hostage taker. Hunger is your boss. Predators are your weather. Sleep is a rumor. Parenting is an endurance stunt. Love is measured in calories. Winter is a mortgage you can't afford. Death is punctual. You are predator and prey at once. A razor in a world of hammers, sprinting in a tunnel that keeps getting shorter. No statue, no headline, no gravestone. Just a quiet patch of bent grass and a silence where a heartbeat used to be. You are a shrew. Not myth. Not villain. Just proof that nature can be breathtakingly cruel and still insist you keep running. 